Hello, Redneck Computer Geek fans! A lot of you have been expressing the idea that you are worried that I am going to stop doing engine revivals just because I am working with and marketing and helping Duramax. That is not the case at all. In fact, today's video is a competitor of Duramax. We've got a Honda out of a generator. This was actually dropped off by a friend of mine. I did some work for him and he found this and decided to go and drop it off to me. So let's flip the camera around and take a look at what we got to fire up today. Now this GX340 out of a generator comes with the classic generator statement of it ran when I pulled it. Though judging from the shellac, and black that is in that, I would assume it probably has not run in quite a long time. Now, the other thing I noticed was there seems to be a semi bit of mouse nest that is coming out from underneath the side cover here, so there's a good chance we could have a chewed off coil wire or anything else of that nature. So what I have done is I have preemptively ordered up this kit I've worked with this company on several engines at this point. This is probably about my 16th kit that I have ordered from them. I've used them on the Small Predators, on the GXs. I've used them on Duramax. I have used their kits on the Champion knockoffs. I've heard that they will fit the Greyhound and the kits from Prince, uh, engines from Princess Auto also. So, the company is Harbot. It's an Amazon company. I will make sure to post a link to this kit along with the kit that I use on the smaller 7 and 6.5 horsepower models. So, we've preemptively purchased this. Supposedly, the electric start was working when it was pulled. As you can see, it has a tapered shaft on it. But what is interesting about this tapered shaft is that it has a flat section from here to here that really would not take that much effort to cut a keyway in. On top of that, this is a 7 8 shaft. And I actually found where I can buy W hubs, well, knockoff W hubs, that are for a 7 8 shaft that do fit this, along with the W hub pulleys by Speco. I'll post links for those down below. I do not have any affiliation with them. I make no profit whatsoever if you are ordering through that link. Order at your own risk. I literally just found the company and started using them due to another YouTuber's video. This obviously can come off if we get this thing up and running. But at this point, I think the first thing that we should probably look into is if we can get that drain broken open on both of those and see if that is inside of there. Also, should probably bolt this thing down to my stand. Just to appease the YouTube trolls that like to tell me I do things out of order, we'll check the oil. Yeah, I'd go with that's lacking a little bit. We'll put a little in. All right, let's grab a 10 millimeter and see if we can knock this loose. Oh yeah. So that's oil. So this thing got stored on its side, drained all the oil into it, which I've seen happen on the smaller Hondas several times. So what's in that fuel filter might actually be backwashed oil. Let's pop this bowl off here, the sediment bowl. Oh yeah. Let's see if you guys can see that in video. That's filled with oil too. So we'll backwash everything and go from there. Oh 
I don't know. I think we should see if it fires up and fills the whole shop full of smoke because that's what rednecks do. Well, here we go. We're going to open up the off switch to our remote gas tank. We're going to open up the fuel there. We're going to give this a slight tug just to go and see. We've got bubbles passing, so that's definitely filling. I'm going to give this a slight tug just to make sure it turns over. And I can feel the compression right there. And it passed the compression stroke. Got a booster pack hooked up. Let's see if this key actually does something. Okay, so the key works. Let's give it some choke. Why won't the choke move? That was weird. It didn't want to move, and then all of a sudden it did. All right, choke on. Here we go. Yeah, I would say that she's got some oil in the muffler and most definitely has some sort of mouse nest in it. So we're going to grab an 8mm and the electric ooga dooga and drop all of that off and see what's in underneath there. And we're going to open up the uh, garage doors. Alright, well, make that a 10 millimeter. I forgot on these larger Hondas, it's a 10 instead of an 8. Alright, acting like we know what we're doing, take two. So you pull the bottom out and rotate down and then sideways. Oh yeah. That's uh, adorable. But what's funny is, I bought a brand new coil expecting it to go and need a coil. But it doesn't. They never chewed it up right there. While we're in here, I wanted to point this out. See right here, that is all chewed up by a mouse and crummy. That is the difference between buying a good coil replacement versus buying as cheap as possible coil replacement. The good ones know that those get trashed and they have one that is with it that goes all the way out through. That wire there, all it has to do is just come just a little bit sideways into here and it gets chewed up by the flywheel. It can get caught into all kinds of stuff. That's the quality difference right there and why it is I go with these kits. After all the oil that we found in the bottom of that carburetor, what's the chance that that filter is filled up also? Oh yeah. Even if it isn't filled up, I'd say the mouse got to it. Let's see here. It's stuck on the top. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's filled with oil. You can see it's saturated in it, and the foam is collapsing and falling off and stuff. So we'll stick the replacement on there, and then we'll see how this thing runs afterwards. I thought I was going to be all smart and keep my kit together and have it all in the box. So I went over on the back wall and grabbed my Duramax 440 filter that literally only had five minutes worth of runtime through it and discovered that it is so much bigger than the Honda size filter that once you put it on, you can't actually get the top of the filter housing on. I might have gotten a little belligerent on the idea I wanted that to fit. 
In the next version, this thing is going to have its own exhaust, and this is going to be custom, probably a slide carb and everything else. I just wanted to be able to finish out and make sure this runs right. Now, like I said, you can speculate all you want as to what it is that the engine might be going into, but I would never give such a blatant hint as to what it could be going into this winter. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. We'll be here with all kinds of different engine manufacturer videos. No worries.